Still Rings True, the enduring voice of Keith Whitley. It opens this Friday, May the 3rd, at the Country Music Hall of Fame. And what an honor to have a few minutes with Lori Morgan and Jesse Keith Whitley. Let's just start with the title of this exhibit. What is it about that voice and those songs that 30 years later still sound as fresh today? They hold up so well, don't they? Well, I think you just nailed it on the head. <laughs> 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 it still sounds so fresh today, and, and uh, he's it's not dated. Yeah. I mean, Keith's records still sound like something that could be released right now, you know, and, and go to radio right mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think that's, you know, and, and that's a lot of, a, a, a lot of good planning by Keith mm -hmm. and uh, Joe Galani and Garth Fundus, uh, Blake Mavis, they all, uh, uh, Noro, they all pitched mm -hmm. together on finding the best songs for Keith and, and they, they got his voice and you have to be picky yeah. and, and, and he was. Mm -hmm. He wanted the songs that, that he knew would last forever mm -hmm. and, and I think he succeeded yeah. on that. And the magic with him too is that when it was his time to truly grab that spotlight, Boy, he'd done all the hard work to lead up to it, huh? He did, and he paid his dues, yeah. I'm going to tell you. And, you know, a lot of times today, people don't know that you pay dues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's yeah. it's like, I won this, and I'm here <laughs> yeah. in a bus and with 18 trucks. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, Keith Keith definitely earned his stripes and, and where he's at in this business. And, um, you know, he, he did pay his dues. And, unfortunately, uh, they got the best of him. But... Um, He's got the recognition, and he got the. Uh, he's in the Hall of Fame that yeah. he wanted to be in, yeah. and and so we're real proud of him. Yeah. Jesse, what's it like to sing those songs on stage? Not not only the musical history, but obviously the personal it's, history. When you kick a Keith Whitley song off at a show, <laughs> and the crowd freaks out, <laughs> and you can't hardly hear yourself sing for them singing back to you. There's yeah. nothing like that. Yeah. That's. That's the good stuff right mm -hmm. there, you know. When you're on stage, you know, when you listen to a song, you get the chills. But when you're on stage and you're performing that song live and you, you can feel it, mm -hmm. you can feel him there with you, yeah. there ain't nothing like that. Yeah. I think those who are in the business know this, but when fans come and see this exhibit, I think one thing that's going to surprise them is when you're so incredibly good at one thing, you forget sometimes that you're really good at a lot of other things. And his songwriting was, oh, was so good. And phenomenal. I think people are going to see those lyrics. And yeah. I think it's going to blow their minds. Huh? He, I, yeah. I hope so. Because yeah. I'm telling you, he was a great songwriter. Mm -hmm. And I can remember him woodshedding, uh, you know, over with Don Cook. And people would come over to the house. And they'd sit outside for hours and write. And I saved so many of his little scribble pads he wrote yeah. things on. And... Um, I remember the day he wrote, There's a Light at the End of the Tunnel, and um, when when Morgan was a little girl, she would sing, There's a Light at the End of the Tuntle. <laughs> <And> <laughs> but, uh, you know, he was. He was an amazing songwriter, yeah. amazing songwriter. And he was a, a writer for Tree Publishing, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, they knew right away that Keith had something that, yeah. that was pretty special. Yeah. Was, there, was there a time when, when hearing those songs, when seeing a, a video of him with Ralph on Nashville now. W was there a time when that was really hard to, to see or hear? It is still yeah. very hard to see and to hear because, you know, when when you have that magical love with somebody and you're, mm -hmm. um, you're a couple and you, you hurt for each other, you feel for each other, uh, you have that connection, um, it doesn't go away. Yeah. And... You know, it's there's there's a hole in my stomach and in my heart that will always be there. Mm -hmm. uh, it gets easier to live with that hole, but it will never be filled. And and sometimes watching Keith and remembering what we did before that show or after that show, or you know, just anything, it just uh, it gets um, it's very emotional. Yeah, Jesse, for you though, I I got to think, what what a wonderful what a wonderful legacy left there for you you know because we we all suffer loss and there's a lot of people who who don't have some of that and mm -hmm. it, it, it it must be nice to go back and and dip into that well from time to time yeah absolutely yeah. and especially having you know some friends that were in his band like yeah. randy hayes mm -hmm. and you know being able to talk to randy and you know i think some i think randy might have donated some things too as well having him around mm -hmm. 
is almost like having a little piece of dad around too, yeah, you know. Yeah. And it's, uh, I mean, it's being able to have things like that's a special thing. Yeah. Uh, about a Tiger Woods driver away from where we're standing, May the 9th, <laughs> there's going to be a sold yeah. out crowd at the CMA Tiger Theater. Woods. Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> you, yeah. Uh, you, Jesse, my buddy Bill Cody is going to be uh, yeah. helping out that night as Bill well. But, but, but what a lineup you have for that 30th anniversary, huh? What a line up we have yeah and we are very uh, <laughs> we are very honored um, really we are and and I have to continue to say uh, we we owe a lot of, of this coming together for this show to to our buddy Chris Keith mm -hmm. who loved worshipped uh, uh, Keith yeah, so much and he loves Jesse like a, a little brother, and uh, he's he was just dead set on we've got to have a huge 30th anniversary show. And it was a we thing. Yeah. We all knew we had. Every, when Chris came around, the ride was kind kind of falling apart. Mm -hmm. And I, I told Chris and Becky, I said, look, I need some help. Mm -hmm. I want y'all to help me get it going. And the next year, I think we had 700. 700 plus with us. Oh, and one of our most fun mornings ever was you two both in studio with us at the Opryland Hotel talking about one of the years in the ride. I mean, we that's oh, yeah. still on. We still get comments from the YouTube video. Yeah, that was a, so, yeah. that was yeah. a fun day. Yeah, yeah. 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 but it's um, going to be a magical night. Huh? Oh, it's oh, going to be gonna great. Be great. Yeah. And uh, and <laughs> I have to I have to say this too. I mean, we have so many people to thank. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and I don't want to stand here and thank everybody, but you know, my manager, bless his heart, I would call him every day going. Tony, I need so-and-so's number. Give me so-and-so's number. And and it was almost like I, I wasn't afraid to call anybody and ask for this because we I knew. knew they would be excited, oh, yeah. you yeah. know? Yeah. So the lineup is special, all hand-picked people, mostly of people who've been there for the last 20-some years yeah. with for, no, for nothing but love of Keith. And some artists that were featured on the original tribute album, yeah. such as Joe Diffie, Mark Chestnut, Tracy, Tracy Lawrence, mm -hmm. um, which is... Yeah, it's pretty cool. And what's even what's even funnier to me about it is that they're not doing any of the songs that they did on the tribute album. They're doing different yeah. songs, you know. And, uh, and you know, it was funny too because hardly any of them. When I said you pick the two songs you want, hardly any of them had. Uh, I mean, uh, the overlap. They the picked different stuff. Overlap. Yeah. yeah. I think there was yeah. one time. Yeah. One time. One. Yep. There was one, and that was Dylan Scott wanted. Between an old memory and me, because between an old memory and me got his record deal, okay. so he wanted to know what he had to do to get it. So I called Chris Keefe and I said, "Hey, can you ask Caleb if he'd give it up?" And <laughs> Caleb said, "Yep, you got it." Caleb's a great guy. I appreciate your time. I Thank know you. I know it's been an emotional day, but but it's always great visiting Thank with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you for, for having us. Here. We appreciate it.